Hi, everyone. Uh, so today we will be testing Pylon. And by testing, I mean that there are a couple of things I will show you in action. And there are a couple of things that I will be reflecting on. Because I'm testing the system for a couple of weeks, I created 300 tickets to test it properly to see how it is performing. I added a couple of articles and it's actually it. And the last thing, and as a reminder, I um, I need to say that Pylon is created exclusively for B2B scenario. So all the tickets, all the processes I will show you today uh, are about B2B. So that's basically it. Uh, let's begin immediately. And we'll start with a ticket panel, ticket view. First, we see uh, all the interactions in the middle that refer to this particular ticket, started from the uh, initial inquiry submitted by the client. On the right, there are, uh, there is a more interesting panel because uh, it's ticket attributes panel. And among all familiar fields, there are a couple of interesting ones. So for example, question type, uh, and you can see that it's an AI generated field, which means that for every new ticket, the system automatically uh, identifies its proper type, its category. And uh, when I started using Pylon, testing Pylon, uh, with a small sample of tickets, it didn't perform well. Of course, we all know that the, the more testing data you have, the more historical data you have, the better is the model performing. And that's relevant for Pylon as well, because uh, when I added more and more tickets, it began to associate question type correctly. Uh, it basically, uh, it basically retrieves information from the admin panel, so which uh, ticket categories you prescribed as the main one, and then it tries to fit uh, to it to the ticket content. Um, yeah, with more and more tickets, it worked perfectly. Uh, but sometimes for complex cases, when I had um, when I had ticket that uh, referred to two topics, for example. Uh, product issue and product feedback, it wasn't, it was not able to identify the topic correctly, the ticket type. So this is something I needed to share with you. Uh, the functionality is basic uh, in most modern tools because uh, it's good to have something that helps you automatically categorize the ticket. It's good when your customers don't have to put this information manually. Uh, the resources panel is uh, more interesting because it's a connector between your support team, your first line support team and your knowledge base team because it's actually the way they can communicate because when, for example, our agents process ticket, they also need to uh, understand uh, whether some knowledge manager involvement is needed, whether we need new content, whether we need to update an existing article, or if we don't have an article at all. So uh, here is a special panel when our agents, when your agents can identify uh, a content gap, and then it will automatically appear in the knowledge management uh, panel um, in this long uh, list of issues where you have this uh, request body and article status. It's a very convenient way to communicate with a knowledge manager. It's a, it's a very comfortable environment for knowledge managers to work with. And here we can also draft an article from all the inquiries within the ticket from all the interactions, I'm sorry, within the ticket. And it's a very nice feature if you follow key CS uh, framework and everyone in your organization is allowed to create and contribute content. They can just, like your agent can just click generate an article from template, for example, FIQ template. And let's see what it, what it will show us as, um, as a final article. So it's just some uh, regular ticket about configuring a single sign-on with Okta. Uh, so it basically did quite a well formatting that uh, fits uh, 
my content guidelines. Uh, actually, it even added this beautiful quote note uh, to, the, to the article, and I like it. Uh, it allows you to specify the category for your article, the collection, and specify its permission levels. So, for example, is it AI agent only, internal customer, public, this is very convenient, for example, if you need your knowledge manager validation or if you need to feed AI with this content. So everything is done in one place. I can uh, click on publish. Actually, you see the results of my previous testing because prior to recording this video, I, of course, tested the system again and again and again to understand what is my narrative, how my narrative should look, look like. And actually we are moving to the interactions and here we can see that there is uh, an AI copilot theme that allows you, of course, it allows your agent to draft a reply to a customer in a very good quality, actually, with a good formatting and empathy level. Uh, let me show you. So again, getting back to our initial query, of course, I experimented before. Um, but anyway, uh, my previous testing doesn't affect how the AI Copilot works because I will show you different scenarios of how AI Copilot can help your agent. So the first one, of course, is to draft a reply. Let us wait for some time and it will work. <clears throat> okay, it works, of course. Uh, it provides a basic reply with a reference to a content. Uh, the formatting is good. But this is, uh, it also shows the resources uh, that it used to craft a reply. So these ones are my previous testing, similar tickets and similar replies were given from me. And what I also, I use, um, sorry, I use uh, the copilot to translate some tickets that came in French and it worked perfectly. So now I will show you like, uh, can you craft reply to this query in in Ukrainian for example today I will test it in Ukrainian and we will play this reverse scenario so at that time the French uh, ticket arrived and I asked the copilot to translate it right now I will ask to translate the reply to craft a reply uh, in some different language because Pylon allows you to include some third party to to the thread as well and let us imagine that this is b2b and we need some uh, other country speaking uh, users to include and while it is thinking uh, okay it crafts a reply in a very good quality in a very good translation I like it doesn't sound like very uh, fake. No, it, it looks looks like a regular reply. Love it. And um, what I also want to show you with regards to um, Copilot is that it's able also to read, it's able to read screenshots. So for example, uh, can you tell me what the client's screenshot tells us? And we will test this as well. And then we will go to the knowledge management panel. We are, we have some limitations in time because long videos are not interesting for anyone. Um, so yeah, trying to do the same as Let me see. The client's screenshot appears to show a configuration or setup screen related to a single sign-on with Okta. It may indicate the current state of their setup or an issue they are encountering. To provide more specific guidance, we would need additional context or details about what they are trying to achieve or the problem they are facing. So you are to evaluate uh, how uh, Copilot works this time. And I'm moving to knowledge base. Uh, again, here are my testing articles. Of course, there are a couple of new ones so we created just a couple of minutes ago. But anyway, what I like uh, regarding knowledge management is that uh, Pylon actually shows you zero search results. So, for example, if we select uh, this time range, 
it will show you nothing. But if we get back to the actual beginning of my testing, uh, which started in winter, uh, we will see um, some uh, zero search results uh, that actually uh, being monitored, being tracked by the system. And I like when such an analytics functionality uh, exists uh, in the system. The second one is this issues that are coming to the knowledge manager from first year from frontline agent agents. And another interesting thing is topics. It's an AI functionality that actually monitors, tracks your tickets, and then tries to identify uh, missing topics, uh, general common topics between your tickets. And for example, for my 300 tickets, it identified onboarding topic as a popular one. Uh, basically, um, it shows related tickets, it shows resources, it understands that the resources up to date, which is true, though I marked this um, in the related tickets, I marked that these um, tickets have, uh, we need to request new article for these uh, tickets, but uh, it basically, it basically says, no, no, to knowledge manager, there are pretty good articles and up to date, which is true. Uh, the only thing is that I wanted to see more topics identified for my 300 tickets. Uh, but again, uh, I guess they just, or whether they need more training data or not, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's okay for my 300 tickets, but I just so you know. So if you have three active uh, tickets, you will see at least one knowledge gap, which will be uh, approved or not uh, by the system. So yeah. Uh, what is also interesting in terms of knowledge management is that you can uh, grab any article and uh, you can um, translate it to different language uh, in just one moment. So, for example, I can translate an article to Ukrainian. So it's an auto translation with AI. So here I see like basically a mirrored uh, text and we can also see that there is a duplicated article existing, which is like you, you see you have all the instruments in place just in your editor. Uh, but anyway, uh, the history of edits is able is is a, um, accessible. Uh, the related uh, issues, comments, translation. So we publish this uh, version immediately, and we also want to have this article in French as well. So we're just doing it. Another and thing that I liked uh, is uh, refers to Ask AI functionality because it actually allows you to. Um, to speak to data, even if you are not a data analyst, you can just form your question, form your analytical question, and it will show you the chart and some insights. So, um, which issues are frustrated our customers in the last three months? Let's prompt uh, Ask AI. Uh, and it looks, uh, we can see that it immediately filtered to the right amount of tickets. It forms a response. And we can see that it correctly identified some interesting topics. So this is how it and, and to finalize, uh, the final thing I wanted to show you is how uh, account summary looks like because it's a brilliant feature. AI generates a summary for each account for you. It basically grabs this history of tickets, split them by topics. And um, for example, it is able to identify key stakeholders. It, it understands that like Julia serves as a primary building content in the finance department because this a couple of my tickets were uh, from finance. Um, HR leads are involved in onboarding multiple departments, require information about the platform because onboarding was quite an interesting topic. And uh, tell um, me what you think about this review. What would you like to check uh, the next time the tool or maybe you would like me to check Python AI agent or something. Overall, my impression is very good. 
I believe in this tool. I I um, am very impressed with the progress they made and continue to make. And I definitely recommend you to use it, this tool if you are dealing with B2B support scenario, because uh, for now, I don't see any alternative option which can be better and more competitive. So that's basically it.